Honey, I think we have an ant problem. Welcome back. If you're already subscribed to us, thank you very much. If you haven't, think about doing that. And today we're here, we're going to talk about ants. Like my Aunt Alice, my Aunt Phyllis. No, my... there's too many of those to name. <laughs> I think there's more of those than there are species of actual ants. <laughs> After our mouse video, the second pest that everybody seems to complain about is ants. So we are here today to talk about those. Did you know that there's over 700 species of ants? <laughs> no, I didn't. <laughs> I did not know this. <laughs> ants are everywhere. Some are over 100 million years old. Kind of like your ants? Oops. <laughs> <laughs> but only 25 or so infest your homes and campers. So, funny story when you get rid of camp, get rid of ants. When we were younger, we had flying ants in our basement a couple summers. Thank God it was the 80s and we have, it was the era of Dr. Scholl's sandals and Bastad clogs. Cause man, those things can kill ants. What we're gonna do now is talk about a few ways to prevent the ants. So like everything, all ants want are food and water. So the best thing you can do is to take away the food and the moisture. So the food part is kind of easy. In your camper, you can use seal tight containers such as mason jars to put your food in. Um, a lot of times we'll store our food inside our microwave so that it's not on the counters where the ants can get to it. And you can use wipes to, to keep your countertops dry underneath where your pet um, dishes are and in and around and under your slides. Yep, keeping, keeping the pet food area clean and dry is a, is a hard thing to do sometimes. Mm -hmm. You also gotta watch out for little leaks. You could have a leak down underneath your camper in your bay area and that could attract them and you won't even see that because it's not in your everyday living space. Talking about in storage places, you want to make sure that you keep your grills and everything clean and away or away from your camper. That's just another attractant. Right, that's another food thing. So if they smell the food and you have that in your bay, they're going to be attracted to it. So when you get to where you're going to park your camper, either at a campsite or where you're going to park it for to store it, you want to make sure that you want to look for ant hills, low hanging branches anything that type of thing, that a way for them to get into your camper. Any, anything that can be a little freeway for them to get to your camper. After you do pull into your campsite, the next thing you want to do is try to prevent them from coming up your power cords, your stabilizers, jacks, your tires, any of those are means for the ants to get into your camper. So one of the things you can do is put double-sided tape around your power cords and that'll help prevent the ants. I know a lot of people use Dawn also or just spray them down when you get to camp. And don't forget about your outdoor kitchens. Yeah, a lot of the new campers with the outdoor kitchens and the refrigerators, make sure you're keeping those areas extra clean so that you're not attracting the ants to them. So, um, so now that we've prevented them the best we can and you still have them, what should we do? Well, we're going to do a few, come up with a few ideas on how to get rid of them. Dr. Scholl's clogs. Take my mom's advice. No. Beat them to death with a two-inch wooden sandal. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> you haven't lived till you fell off a Dr. Scholl sandal. Anyway, enough reminiscing. <laughs> well, there's a bunch of different types of sprays. And um, the one thing that we use an awful lot of is taro, but you got to be careful with the sprays and the taro around your pets, and because it can be harmful to the pets yeah. and the and the humans. Yeah, if you have kids and animals, you want to. There's a lot better ways you can do it, but 
instead of using sprays. Um, we do like the taro, the flat liquid baits, because you can hide those pretty good in an area where animals and kids can't get to them. But any of that stuff is toxic. Well, you can, then you can use borax mixed with some sugar. Yeah, they usually do, I think, a one to two mixture of borax and sugar, or borax and jelly to make like a paste and you can put that around. But again, that's toxic to animals and, and uh, children and humans, so. And then you can spray right on them with um, water and Dawn dish soap. Yeah, that'll actually suffocate them. When they're, so if you have an infestation, say, on your cupboard, so you can take your spray, spray it on top of them and just let it sit, and they'll all die off, and then you can just wipe them away. Uh, and you can use white, um, white vinegar, but what that does is it takes away the, the, their scent trail so that the, the trail's in and out. Right, because that's how ants move. They follow each other's scent trails, so if you start removing the scents, they get a little confused, and hopefully they'll go to somebody else's camper. And I'll let you use, um, say the next one because you could probably say it and I'll probably be stumbling around with it. Diatomaceous earth. A lot of people live by this stuff. If you get the food grade, it is safe for humans, it's safe for kids, it's safe for animals. A lot of people use this on their farms. But uh, what it is, it's fossilized dirt basically. And what it does is when fleas and ticks and um, any kind of bug go across it, it basically cuts them up like a razor blade. The only downfall of diatomaceous earth is that if it gets wet or damp, it's useless. It doesn't do anything anymore. So you can use something like that if you have a flea problem in your home. You can put it in your carpets. It's almost like a dirt though. We did put it on our dog once and he looked like Linus going across the, <laughs> across the house. There's this little path of dirt following him everywhere. But, you know, if you want a more natural thing, diatomaceous earth is a, a good thing to do. And what about cinnamon? So people use cinnamon and, and peppermint oils and that kind of thing. I don't like essential oils. Essential oils are also harmful to pets. So you have to be careful with those, especially in small places. Um, cinnamon. I don't think it does. I think there's a lot better methods than putting cinnamon down. But that masks their trail too, like the vinegar would. Today we are at Wilson Tuscarora State Park. And this is beautiful Lake Ontario behind us. Yes, it's not an ocean, it's a lake. Usually there's a nice sunset here, but there's some rain moving in tonight, so there's not too many colors out there. We hope you don't have any ants in your camper <laughs> or, or your pants. Yeah. <laughs> well, there you have it. That's the list that we have for you. If you have any um, other things that you know that work for you, leave them down in the comments down below. But if you haven't already, subscribe. Give us a thumbs up. And share it with all your friends, please. Thanks for stopping by. Bye now.